Hi guys, it's Amanda Watson from MrsWatsonEducation.com, my personal blog where I share with you other educators of the world, little tips and tricks I've picked up along the way to make your lives as teachers a little bit easier. It's a hard profession and we need each other to survive. So today's topic is interactive digital notebooks, a how-to guide. I'm very excited to share this with you because it is such a great tool to use with my students. I'm anticipating um, this coming year, we're going to find out next week officially, but a blended learning. I'm going to have to teach both physically in the classroom and with remote students students um, and this is just a way I'm making my life simpler for them. I'm doing a lot of work right now to get it set up but it's going to make things continuous for my students going forward um, because you can anticipate a- absent students in your physical classroom when things happen. You're gonna, I'm going to anticipate students getting enrolled later on when virtual isn't working for them or vice versa, right? So there's going to be a lot of um, fluidity to next year and we have to prepare for that. So really excited to share that with you. Um, this video is going to have some prerequisites so if you don't know how to make a worksheet into a interactive um, digital format using slides and present or PowerPoint presentation please watch my second post in the video in the series that I'm sh- um, this is a part of um, because I'm going to be going through with the assumption that you know how to do that as well as the third one which is about sharing the different share settings I'm not going to talk about that too much in here I'm going to add a little bit more to it towards the end about how this is a unique situation and how I share in two different ways um, but that's all in the last video so please go back and see those let's get started so this is my digital interactive notebook um, I'm gonna go through some of the basics of what I have for you and this is going to be included in my my um, template that I'm providing within my blog that you can download for yourself to use as a jump start you don't have to make it exactly like that if you just want to see what it looks like or just take some parts of different pages that's completely fine okay so first thing um, I have a few different versions of my cover page so I have this one right here just with the artwork I added my bitmoji to one if you don't know how to do bitmoji um, or you can do that easy share here's a tutorial for it you could click this button and go there you could click right here and get to the blog series I have a six part how to blog series that will tell you how to make a bitmoji virtual classroom like this one um, from start designing it to finish where you embed it directly into your canvas LMS so if this is this is my springboard I started with my bitmoji classroom and I built and built and then that this is what kind of resulted from it so this is um, very much integrated and you'll see why and then I also have this version of um, I thought some teachers might want to have like a direction blurb right here instead so that's another option that you have um, for you're just getting started you could change things these are just these are all just um, boxes that I just manipulated together and layered together so that it may, looks like a composition notebook so are the tabs so you can do this very easily and make it all sorts of cool designs for yourself now as you can see I have this set up right here in the center the page is configured to an eight and a half by eleven size so you could see that because I wanted it portrait mode some teachers are preferring their interactive notebooks landscape mode whatever works best for you um, there's a few reasons why I like it in the portrait mode I'm going to start talking about it as I try to get to the preview Okay, it's going to take a little bit to load, but it's such a large document. Um, I like the portrait mode because one, if I have it set to eight and a half by eleven, when I print the document, it's going to print on an eight and a half eleven worksheet, just like I've created up here on the presentation, which is so helpful. So if I have a student in the physical classroom, right, I'm making this digital interactive notebook for my home-based students right but I'm going to have physical students and I could just print off the pages for them so it's the same I don't want to be recreating the will for my digital versus my physical students I want to give them the same content the same material this is a way you can do that right also um, if you go to um, save as PDF and then you print it you could print two per page so this is going to cut them down so you can actually just like cut these in and have the students glue them into their interactive notebooks very easily so that's a really great feature there um, make it like a book you could just customize and make for each um, like each quarter or each unit you can give a student their interactive notebook that's kind of empty or that they fill in um, and that they complete it's really up to you but making that configuration is great another reason why I like the eight and a half by eleven portrait style is because now you have all this space on the side that is blank space that you could totally use because if you go into presentation I'm going to go quickly into presentation mode you can see very quickly you don't see the stuff on the side right so I can use this as my teaching method when I'm presenting the notes so they could see what it looks like and physically in front of them in class or on zoom or wherever I'm at and teaching um, but on the sides if a student's opening it up on their laptop to actually work in it they can have all my directions too I can insert videos so um, I'm going to give you guys my 
little projector screen so you can see that in the template. Um, I'm going to give you the clipboard in the template and you could add tutorial videos. So for my students on this first page, I'm going to have a tutorial video much like this one, but where I talk about how to use this for them. Um, I'm going to have directions on each page. I'm going to have a link to my course website, which is my Bitmoji virtual classroom. Look them up. They are awesome. Read about them, figure out how to do them because you'll want to. I have sticky notes on the side. So I just made these with the idea that students could write test date or Mrs. Watson. I don't understand this or you are my favorite teacher yay right yay 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 um, if they want to use arrows in their interactive notebook like well, look at this material it's really important they can they just drag and drop so these are just extra features that would no otherwise be wasted unused space that I'm giving to my students to help and I'm using to help my students right with directions and clarity that's what they need okay so those are just kind of that going forward I'm going to um, Go through some of the pages. So I always start my interactive notebooks with a table of content. Uh, not always. Last year was the first year I did it, but it was really good and I liked it. So I'm going to continue. Um, a lot of teachers, if you don't know your whole curriculum, it took me three years to get to this point, um, don't have a table of contents or they have the students enter them in as they go, which is nice. Then I do a, like a brief summary of my um, syllabus. It's not my full one. I give to parents, but it's a copy of it. Then I do a first activity where they write their name, the acrostic poem. Um, and you can see that this is uh, where I kind of outbreak break out every year what the interactive notebook is going to look like so the students understand my reasoning behind it. If you don't know how about interactive notebooks, I've been AVID trained so my interactive notebooks are very closely aligned with AVID even though I'm no longer at AVID school. Um, I use Cornell Notes, I use creative left side output pages, and these are three different blogs that will help you if you click on them in my um, I think they're linked in my blog. I haven't finished writing it, so they should be in the future. Um, and they're also linked in the templates I'm going to give you. If you click on those, you'll be able to see my blog posts on why I do the things I do and how I make them work for my students. Okay, So that's just extra benefit for you there. I always start each unit with a vocabulary builder activity, definition, picture. Um, I will have that linked into Teachers Pay Teachers as a free download if you'd like it. And then I do a KWL and a Keeley Probe if you're a science teacher, you know what that is. If you're not, it's totally fine, but kind of just getting to think about what we're learning about. And you have different openers. Do what works for you. You could have um, Venn diagrams that you include, Cornell notes. I love them. Use them if you like. People hate on them so much, but they're so great if you know how to utilize them correctly with your students. Brain breaks involved. Summer. It's just it's a great re learning tool if you use it correctly. Um, you could do labs write up. So even if you're doing a demo for your virtual students and they're not physically doing a lab or even in class if they can't touch things, they could still record their data. They could still write conclusions. Um, I have structure strips. So there's another link to a separate blog I have that's really cool for ELA. You might want to look into that for um, like essays as well, but for labs. Um, again, graphic organizers. I use Doodle Notes with my Cornell Notes. And if you want to see why I use Doodle Notes, here's a blog link to that. Um, I also use a Teachers Pay Teacher. I have a bunch of my um, created Doodle Notes up there so for you to use if you're a science teacher and they align with your curriculum. I'll be adding more when I get more time too. Um, in your output pages and you can create your IMB however you want, right? Um, there's the number one rule for interactive notebooks is there's no one way to do it. Do what's best for you. But you could do short, quick writes. You can do um, demo observations. You could do comic strips. If you have students that are creative, you could just have the comic strips on the side so that students that don't know can just copy and paste over there or just drag it over. Um, or you, or they could create their own because some kids are way more creative than I ever am. And if you give them free reign, they surprise you. Any poster projects you would normally do in a regular classroom where the kids got to design a poster, do it digital. Put it in your I and B, right? Create memes. You can do any worksheet you already have created. You could just add it to your interactive notebook as a picture. Done, right? Make your life simpler. Use the digital tools that are available. And of course, just align paper. At the very end, I have two examples of um, warm up. So I have my daily warm up where you could just enter into the text box or there. Um, I have the students do bell work when they get started. And I'll continue to do that before in digital format because I'm not going to be changing much. I'm just going to be changing the method of get, talking to the students, communicating, but not the same. It'll be the same structure mostly. Okay, so going through that, that's just kind of an overview. What I need you to do is you're going to have your master, so think about this, you're going to have a master presentation or slideshow that's going to be the one that you're building your content in. And when you build your content, don't worry about 
let's say over here, don't worry about these text boxes, okay? I have them there because I'm going to include them in the template for you, but don't worry about that in your master, okay? I'm gonna explain why, okay? Because then I want you to have a second copy uh, or a second presentation open, and I want you to title that one Student INB. And this is where you're going to create from your master that you don't want students touching a shell of what your INB is going to look like so students could add to it. So you got to think about from the very beginning, what do you need? Okay, so if I pick this as my cover, right, this is what I want as my cover for my students. That's why I decided I've built it. There's nothing I want to change. I haven't added the text box there for students to enter it in. Um, I'm not going to worry. It's it's linked right now on some of these, but I'm not going to worry about that, okay? I'm just going to, I built what, it wanted, what I want it to look like. This is kind of a synopsis from that first tutorial I talked to you about, worksheets, but I'm going to download it as a JPEG, okay? That's what I want the picture to look like. I'm going to go to my student version, right? new slide, get rid of this stuff. I'm going to go to background. I'm going to browse my computer and the last thing that was downloaded, it's going to be the same title as my presentation, is going to be that picture. Okay, It's this slide but now it is in a picture form set as a background. It cannot be manipulated. Now that I have that set, now it's my student slide, I could go through and add the content that I want students to edit, right? I could start doing that part. Okay, so let's just go um, through a few pages. Act like, as if I'm doing this, okay, we're going to act like these are going to be the pictures. So for each of these pages, I would have downloaded, um, I would have downloaded it and entered it in as its own page, as a fixed page background, okay? I'm not going to do that for time's sake here, um, but we're going to pretend like I did the same thing I did for all these pages, okay? So now, oh, and let me get one more. Let me get this one. Remember, in real life, this would be a background image that I'm, um, sorry, that I'm, uh, inserting as a background, okay? I download it as a JPEG, inserting it as a background, okay? So now that I have all the pages I've created in my master and I've brought them all the ones I want for my students, think about um, how you want to implement this, okay? Some teachers are doing weekly IMBs and sharing those with students because they only want to work a week at a time. Some um, teachers I've heard are doing quarters or semesters or a year. I'm going to probably do the year because I want to have them build as they go. But you may not be comfortable with that and that's fine. But either way, you want to figure out what you want your students to have access to, right? And then once you have that, then you start editing it out, okay? Um, I'm going to add one more page. Sorry, I just thought about, I wanted to show you very easily. Let's add this one. Okay. Right, and remember that would have been a background ad, okay, not the way I just showed you. Okay, so now I have my basic setup. I'm going to start linking things to make them easier to use, okay? So my intro, I'm going to make a box, okay? Oh, I don't want to make a text box, sorry. I'm going to make a, it could be a text box, so it just makes it a little harder. Okay, a box. I'm going to make this box transparent for the inside and the outside and now I'm going to hyperlink this box to page two because page two in the slide presentation is where I want my kids to go to start hit apply it doesn't go if it doesn't apply and now in their copies if they click on here they'll be able to go to slide two immediately without having to scroll through now two is obviously not page 50 is a difference but you're setting up the shell so that when you send this to students this copy when you send it to students it has all the interactive features that you already have for your students that you want them to use okay so that's great now this is a cool feature look if I switch page two and three together this is still going to send me to page three now, not page two anymore, because I have it linked to that physical page. Fun fact there. Also, you'll notice on the bottom of all my pages, um, I have a little icon that's gonna, it says back, and it's gonna take my students to the home page. I have it so that it's linked to the first slide. No matter what that first slide is, it's gonna be linked to the first slide. And, um, and I just copy and paste that to all of my pages. You can see it already there, and it's all going to be linked to the first thing. Now remember, if you just downloaded all of these as JPEGs and these are the backgrounds, you're gonna have to, um, if it's as a fixed image, you're just going to have to, you remember, you can't, you can't um, 
hyperlink the background, right? So you would just put over the picture a transparent box and hyperlink that picture itself to the first slide. I messed that one up really quick, sorry. I really shouldn't have to do this, but I'm going to because I'm first slide, apply, and then I could just copy and paste that text box in all of my pages that I'm giving to students so it's there, okay? Now, that's great. So you're going to want to do that for all your pages. If you have a vocab, like, so I always start my unit with a vocabulary builder. It does not change no matter what the unit is. So if I put those already into my shell presentation, so I'm going to have eight of them because I have eight units, I can link that first page, right? So this is page five. I'm going to go here, unit one. I'm going to make my box. Great. I'm going to transparent it out, clear it out. I'm going to link it to, remember, page, oops, click the wrong thing. Link it to page five in the presentation. And I'm going to do that with page, or the next ones, unit two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because I already know what those are going to look like. And no matter what pages my students put, and remember, it saves it to that one, add to the their master presentation that they're going to make a copy of when I give them more slides, it's going to be already formatted for them to navigate through. So just some things to think about. Um, the same thing you'd want your, your warm-ups, the first one to be linked to that warm-up one so the students could go straight to it and not have to scroll down like 30, 40 pages, right, towards the end. Um, so just think about what you, how you want it to function, what you want to give to students immediately. I'm going to be making my shell with all eight units into a vocabulary page is included in there and linked, my warm-up linked, my intro part linked, and all the pages that have the home page there. I'm going to give that to my students the first week of school, teach them how to save it to a place that I can access it to. That's what I taught in the last lesson. And teach them how to um, manipulate and edit things, right? That's going to be a little bit of pre-work done, but it should be simple for them to figure out as, they, you know, as you go on. Now, here's why we have a third presentation. Okay, so at the very beginning of the school year, I would share this, you could watch my video on share settings, I'd share this with my students, anyone on the link, copy it, I'd go to my Bitmoji classroom and I'd say, INB make your copy right? Something like that. I talk them through it through um, a Teams meeting or something, but I'd have that linked here. It's share. Oh, I wouldn't want to edit it. You just make sure you do that. You don't want them edit it. Change viewer. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you'd make sure the settings are right, which is like I said, my last video, I'm not going to talk about how to do all that right now. And so now my students in my Bitmoji classroom would be able to get to the shell of their IMB, save it to their file, and they'll have their copy of it. Um, but that doesn't help me when I want to add seven pages between unit one and the beginning of unit two, right? Because I just gave them the shell. So this is what you have to do next, okay? You should also have a template that's going to be your share IMB um, for each of the individual pages. So if I want to have my students work on this page, okay? Remember, I'm not worried about the editing for students on my master. I could if I wanted to. I'm going to download it as a JPEG going to go into my share INB, create a new slide. I'm going to put this as the background. Remember it's going to be the top one if you just saved it, even though they all have the same title. And now I could add my text boxes, right? Because this is what I'm going to be giving to students on, let's say, week three of instruction. They've already set up their pages. They know what it looks like. So I'm going to have copy. I'm going to have a bunch of text boxes. I'm not going to do them all, but you get the gist that students would write into. And this is just the one page for my master. I'm not sending them my whole master. I'm just going to send them this one page. So I'm going to go to share settings. I'm going to get the URL, um, make it so that they can view it, um, not edit it so you don't have kids messing things up, um, but they would be able to see it. I'm going to, oh, sorry, let me copy that link. I'm going to go up here into my IMB, uh, my, my, or sorry, my Bitmoji virtual classroom. I can share this in Teams. I can share this wherever I want. I'm going to link it there as a URL. And now the students will be able to open this one page 
see it, copy it, so they'd be able to go in here, and it's hard for you to see it because it's I have access to all that. They'd be able to copy the slide, and then they'd be able to go to their IMB that you've given them and they've been working on, find the page number, and insert it into their page and begin working. Right? That's wonderful. That's how I'm working with this. Um, in my last talk, um, my last tutorial, I talked about how you can make folders to grade and share if you don't have like a Canvas or you don't have a Google Classroom to make that easy. But that is how I'm utilizing these um, interactive notebooks. So I'm building. The building is really fun to do. It's really fun to do creative stuff. I love the fact that I'm making it mirror everything I'm doing in the physical classroom, what my two students are doing in the physical IMB. So I'm not recreating the real. I'm doing a little bit work right now, but it's going to be a lot less work in the future so more family time for me um, I make my shell for my students I'm giving in the first week of school and then I make a separate slide that I'm going to link into whatever way I'm communicating with students that will have the each of the new pages so if day two let's see week three I want them working on a comic strip right I'm going to remember I would use this as a background I want to just copy and paste um, but just for time's sake, right? I'd put that there, and now the students would have, when they go in here, they'll have both of the um, papers, or I could just say, okay, that was Monday, we're on Tuesday now, here you go, and they'll, that will change for them. So that's just kind of the live ways that this can work. I am, there's probably other ways I haven't thought about about sharing these and utilizing them. Um, I hope that you come up with the ways that work for you. This is just what I've come up for me and I hope you enjoy the template and are able to confidently make your own digital interactive notebook. Remember I have links throughout the um, template and in the and in the actual blog itself of various um, other posts that might help you. So if you're not sure how to do something, I already have a post probably about it that could be helpful for you with tutorial videos. So don't forget to stay um, connected with me, subscribe to my blog, connect with me on social media so you could get updates about when I release new content. I have lots of more ideas coming forward, but I wanted to get this out to you as soon as possible because this is great going forward for distance blended learning, however it shows up. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was useful. Thank you so much for watching and um, stay tuned for more to come. Bye.